You have some data in your database and also learned how to add new data to the database. Now it's time to learn how to get all this data from the database. For that, you'll create an HTTP GET API endpoint. Let us go to Visual Studio and see it in action. In here, you need to go to the book service because you need to create a new method. So just after the add book, I'll just collapse the add book method. And then I'll just type in here, public list. I want to return a list of books because I want to return all the books and then get all books. This doesn't take any parameters. All it does is that it reads all books from the database. So all books is equal to context.books.toList. And then it just returns all books. Now, since we just have a single line of code, we can also change this to just return context.books.toList. Or you can even make this shorter by just adding the goes to context.books.toList. And you can remove the closing bracket. This method will return all the books from the database. But sometimes you just need a single book, not all the books. So in that case, you need to pass as a parameter an ID and then get the book with that ID. Now, the reason why we pass the ID as a parameter is because the ID is our primary key and the unique identifier in our table. So for that, let us create another method in the book service that we are going to use to get a single book from the database. So here I'll just copy this method and just Paste it down here. I'll change the name to get book by ID. This will take a parameter and will be of type integer and it will be the book ID. Then in here you need to write context.books.first or default. And you can see that we have in here two methods. If we use the first method, and there is no book with the ID that we are going to provide as a parameter, then in that case, this method will throw an exception. But if you use the first or default, it will check for the book by ID. If it doesn't find the book, then it will just return null. So let us use the first or default. Then, and that goes to, and that ID is equal to the book ID. And we see that we get an error and that's right because we are trying to return a list of books, but we are just getting a single book from the database. So let us remove the list and just leave the book. And now the error is gone. Now let's save the changes and go to the solution explorer and you go to controllers, then books controller. Let us scroll down. We are going to create two HTTP get methods. So in here, I'll just create the first HTTP get. So HTTP get, it will be a public I action result. Then get all books. It doesn't take any parameters and no parameters are passed through the HTTP get request. You can change the name in here if you want. So you can just change the API endpoint to be get dash all dash books. Then inside here, we're just going to write var all books is equal to the service. So the book service dot get all books. Now that we have a result, we can just return. Okay. And then all books. So this is all you need to do for the get all books. Now let us just copy this API endpoint and then just paste it down here. Change the API endpoint to be get book dash by dash ID and remove the books ending. Also change the method name in here to be get book by ID. Now this method in here will have a parameter and that will be of type integer. Let's name it ID. The ID needs to come from the HTTP get request. 
So up here, just write slash, then inside curly brackets, you need to write ID. Now it's really important that the name that you define in here is identical with the name that you provide up here, because that way the API endpoint will know how to map the URL parameter with the method parameter. Next in here, just write single book or just let's say book is equal to book service dot get book by ID and pass as a parameter the ID and in here return okay the book. Let us save the changes and we see that we don't have any errors. So let us just run the app. Here on Swagger, now we can see that for the books controller, we have three API endpoints, two HTTP gets and one HTTP post. So let us execute the first one, the get of books, click in here. It doesn't need any parameters, so you can just click the try it out, then execute. If you scroll down on the response body, you should have all the books that you have in your database. So this is the book that we added on the previous part. And these are the books that we added with the database seed method. If you scroll down in here, you can see that the response is 200, which means a success. So we have up here, we have three books with ID one, two, and three. Now let us go to the other API endpoint, click in here, and then I'll click the try it out, providing here a parameter that is the ID, so ID three, and then click the execute button. If you scroll down in here, you see that you have a response body and a single book is returned from the web API. If you scroll down here, you have the responses, the status code 200, which means success. Now let us add a new book, try it out. I'll just change the title to be new, then new, let us say this is false, then I remove the date red and the rate, the genre will be, let's say new, the author new, the cover URL new, and click the execute button. If you scroll down in here, you see that the book was created. Let us scroll up in here to the first API endpoint where we can retrieve all the books. So this one, just cancel, then click try it out, and then execute. If you scroll down to the response body, you can see that we have a new book with ID 4, and the title is new, new, is read false, no date read, no rate, etc. If you scroll down in here, then click cancel, then try it out, change the ID to be 4, and click the execute button one more time. If you scroll down in here, you'll see that we have the book that we just added from the HTTP POST API endpoint. 